So thanks, Nathaniel. Thanks, Bruce. It's, it's great to be here, especially to be kicking off the conference. I, I guess that's uh, somehow an honor there. Or uh, I'm not sure why I got placed first. But anyway, the title is uh, Self-Organizing Groups, Ad Hoc Work, and Expectations of Simplicity. And before I, I jump into, into the topic, just for those of you that, that, that uh, don't know who we are, so we're, we're Colosa, but we're probably best known for our, our, our BPM Suite Process Maker. Uh, it's an open source uh, BPM. We started it in 2008. Uh, today it's downloaded about 500 times uh, a day, and we're actually based in New York City, but I spend a lot of time in Latin America. Uh, and we've got deployments now across the world, lots of different verticals, government, finance, uh, industry. So getting into the topic, uh, I am going to be showing you a mobile interface, although I actually don't really think uh, what I'm showing is necessarily about mobile. It's really about simplifying uh, BPM, uh, but mobile lends itself to that. And I think there, there's sort of a couple things that, that we have, that have influenced us in terms of creating this, uh, this version of our product. It's actually uh, in an alpha stage now, and we'll be launching it in some stage later this year. But the first thing that we sort of thought about uh, was really the changing nature of organizations and the way people interact in organizations. And I think it's fair to say that uh, we, we used to live in a much more structured world, and that's, that's been certainly changing, but probably about 10 years ago it started changing much, much more quickly. And so what used to be obvious connections and were probably much easier to model inside a BPM tool have potentially become much, much less predictable, uh, hence a lot of the emphasis on uh, adaptive case management and other other sort of variants of, of what I guess used to be BPM. So we see as well this sort of changing nature of the organization. And it's been one of the things that sort of led to what, what, what I'll show you today, which is that the way people are interacting is, is probably much less formal, uh, much less predictable, uh, and also not necessarily known uh, always beforehand. So this, the organization is something that would be shifting a lot. And along with that, another sort of influence in what we'll, I'll show you today is, is the, the nature of the way interfaces have changes, changed. So I think it's, it's uh, certainly everybody in the workplace is using uh, apps. And, and basically, what I would say is the application of the enterprise has led to changing expectations of what an interface should be and how simple it should be uh, to use. And enterprise software inevitably has lagged behind because it has other concerns. Uh, but the pressure is certainly very present in terms of what, what these interfaces look like and what they mean uh, in our world. And that even comes down to this idea that something that was very accepted 20 years ago in technology or, or maybe a little more would be that you have to read something, a manual, in order to set something up and, and do it. And today, the idea of manuals is really something that, uh, or any kind of setup, is really something that is disappearing. And so a manual without words is, is one step. And then as a, a well-known uh, European designer friend of mine says, in fact, if you have to set it up, it was probably designed uh, poorly. And I've been discussing an, an app with him recently. And, uh, and uh, he pointed out some, some interesting facts. And I think if we look at the tendencies now, there's less and less setup of everything. Yet. BPM software and enterprise software in general really has a, a value proposition that's, that's slightly different. And it suffers a little bit because BPM software sort of exposes that which other software tends to hide, which is the building process. So in BPM software, we sell our software to a, a, a user, a business analyst, uh, potentially instead of a developer. And they're going to actually develop a, uh, a solution uh, using that. and so. Instead of hiding that whole development process and then bringing it over to the user and saying, here it is, there's no setup, use it, You're, we're actually selling to somebody who's going to have to do the setup, which inevitably means that there's a lot of effort to get started. So what I would term sort of high effort in getting started, uh, designing a process map is not easy. So whether the tool is easy to use or not, or if it's BPMN or not, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that getting an organization to sit down and agree to their process is very difficult for most organizations. And I think everybody probably knows that, knows that here. And, uh, and so that means essentially there's low or no organic adoption. Uh, I mean, this you know, BPM software, I don't know anybody that's selling, that's installing 
uh, thousands a month or tens of thousands a, a month or, 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 yeah, definitely not thousands a month either. Whereas the rest of the software world, you know, anything less than hundreds of thousands or millions these days seems, uh, seems like it's, uh, it's pretty low adoption. But there's a trade-off and the benefit on the, on the uh, other side is that the user, of course, experiences something that's relatively effortless and there's a, a big ROI gain, hence lots of uh, installations that are able to charge pretty high price tags to, uh, to get the, the software up and running. So when the, the product I'm going to show you now, which again is a, a version, a mobile version of our, pro of our uh, process maker product, our objective was really to add in more ad hoc and take away design. In fact, we completely took away the designer. So something we spent many years designing and, uh, and promoting, we decided let's take it out of the product completely and let's see what happens. So our, our objectives there were to lower or lower the setup to basically zero so that somebody could be up and running uh, literally in minutes and uh, essentially increase adoption. And with that, we accept there is a trade-off, which is we're going to deliver uh, a lower ROI, really, a lower value. And hence, uh, I think a lot of mass adoption products, uh, not only do they charge a, a little bit, they can charge a little bit because of the volume, but that's, a, I think, an accept, acceptable trade-off. And inevitably, we'll match that with the, the price. So this was kind of how we started thinking about this product. And the result is a product right now we call Form Slider. And it's really an app builder for ad hoc workflow of structured data with minimal setup, completely minimal setup. So now I will uh, switch over to the, the tablet, if I can switch to the tablet. All right, there we are. So, so this is form slider, and underneath we'll hopefully get a chance to take a look a little bit uh, on the other side on the interface, the building interface. Underneath it's basically process maker, uh, and in fact, Process Maker uses the same interface, but there's an essential difference, again, that we've, I've re we've removed the designer completely and made this a, a completely uh, ad hoc uh, product. So I'm going to enter in. Hopefully, I'm still connected. Yeah. So uh, we started with as simple of an interface as we, can, as we could build. Really, I think our products, for those of you that know them, uh, Process Maker is really known for simplicity. We, do our, we try our hardest to keep features out of our product. We really believe in, in more is less, uh, and I think you can see that in our product pretty clearly. So here, uh, we've got, a, a, I think, a pretty clear interface, and I'll talk to you in a minute about sort of some things that, for us, are different, this idea that there's an area for my cases, and there's also an inbox. We don't really have that concept in our other, in, in Process Maker. Uh, here we have much more, uh, con we have a much more, more, much more a construct around case ownership and around uh, data as opposed to just requests and workflow that we have in our other product. So uh, first I'll start by just showing you sort of a straight, a straight through kind of uh, flow just so you can kind of get a feel for the interface and there's nothing too dramatic here. So this, uh, we've got a number of, of banks. Uh, mobile for us and I'm sure for, for every BPM product out there is a great opportunity. We've got a lot of our existing users that of course are going to start using this. So from an economic standpoint, it's, it's very, it's, it's a great, great time for us, actually. Um, so I'll just uh, fill out a couple fields here. And uh, all the fields you would expect in sort of mobile data capture. And actually, we, we do think that mobile data capture is the sort of primary use. Again, it's the driver for current users that are going to be adopting this from our own existing uh, user base. And so, again, if this, we're assuming this is some sort of a, a bank application, so we've got to take a picture. And uh, we may have to sign. And then, basically, now we've got some, some interesting uh, variants of this that I'll show you. So that's sort of the basic concept, now I submit it, and off it goes to my declared endpoint, which could be process maker, could be another system, could be straight database. Uh, and that's great. Our customers love it. They think it's amazing, but it's really not that interesting. So now I want to show you a version that, that we think is get, gets a little, more, uh, a little more interesting. So thinking about a, 
a simpler example, a purchase request example. Uh, here we're going to do something, a variant of this that's a little, a little different. So I'm going to uh, imagine that I'm purchasing uh, cars for 7,000. And now, instead of submitting, I'm going to uh, route. And routing, as I mentioned, this is a completely ad hoc product. So there was no design time. This was about literally a 10-minute setup to get this, this workflow going. So I'm going to submit this, and I need to decide who I'm going to submit it to. Uh, so I'm submitting it for approval. So I'll decide that I want to attach the approval forms. The approval forms are attached to uh, forms, or sorry, the users are attached to forms, which are attached to tasks. But again, everything is ad hoc. And since I'm making it ad hoc and I'm returning some of the power to the, the so-called knowledge worker in this case, uh, that worker needs a little more effort and information to make a, a decision. So we've included some uh, ability to sort of uh, see what the recommendation is. So we've, we've got uh, green, red, and yellow to recommend whether that's, that's of, that, of that list of people who I can submit to, you know, what's my best choice. And if I look at the... Uh, if I look at the, the indicator, it'll give me some indication of how fast that person is processing requests. And we're applying a small alg algorithm there to sort of generate that and decide who's, uh, uh, who's able to best process it. And we're even going to add in a little more flexibility. So really kind of uh, adding, getting rid of a lot of the structure around what, was normally, uh, what we normally do in Process Maker. So I might even take the liberty to call this person. I don't have a, a network connection here, but I could call straight from, uh, from within the application. And we're also integrating it with, uh, with the chat. We haven't decided with, if it'll be an uh, existing chat client or if we'll do our own chat client. But essentially, the idea is there is to help me make a decision. The next thing we've done on this product is when I do make the decision of who I'm going to route to, it then prompts me, do I want to make a one-way routing or a round-trip routing? So the idea is, am I going to retain ownership of this case, or am I going to deliver it to somebody else and really not uh, have that much to do with it afterwards. So round trip, of course, has got to come back to me uh, at some point, not immediately, uh, and, but I am going to be worried about that data until, it's, until the very end, until somebody submits it somewhere. Uh, one way, I'm not worried at, at all about it, and it can take on a life of its own. So in this case, I will I'll give the next person a, uh, a due date. I'll leave the priority as high, and I will do a one-way routing uh, on to, to Emily. So now I log out, log back in as Emily. And so again, I mentioned earlier that we have this concept of both my cases and the inbox. So in this case, it is something that's been sent to me, so it's going to be my inbox. It's not, not my cases. So I'll go into my inbox, and I see the request. I can see the person it came from in a kind of a Google style. Uh, icon, uh, obviously see the case number, and I see the form, and I see now that I've been asked to request it. Again, everything done, 10 minutes set up, no designer. So things you've all seen before, but in this case, uh, the idea being deliver an app, uh, building uh, software that can build apps for truly non-technical users in a matter of minutes. So I've got the purchase request, I'm supposed to approve it, but I decide that I really can't uh, approve this. I don't have enough information to approve it. So I will uh, route it on again. And this time, I'll request additional analysis. I do get some indication of where I should send it, because I'm able to associate very easily without design the form to the users. So again, I've got my indicators there of who I could send it to. Uh, I decide that I want to convince Sherry to do it, even though she's not necessarily going to be the fastest person, apparently. But I might exert some influence there. And this time, I'll do a round trip. Um, and I'll set a date for her. And I will send this via round trip to, uh, to Sherry. So now logging out. And logging back in. For Sherry, we see she's got something now in her inbox. And again, we see where it came from. And in this time, we see that uh, she's going to add in the additional analysis. So cars for 7,000 looks fine. And 
Sherry is just going to do submit. She could do route or, or submit. We're probably the, this route button may disappear eventually. But we know since it's a round trip, it has to go back to the last person who round tripped it. So that was uh, Emily. So Emily logs in and sees in her inbox the one from Sherry. So again, we see who it came from very clearly. And sees the analysis and says, OK, great. Now I'm actually able to, uh, to approve this. So we select the additional form and approve it. And now, from here, she probably submits it. And it's over. So essentially, and I'll show you on the back end here in a moment how we basically put this together. But the idea is complete flexibility completely lowering the barrier to entry so that this can really be set up by unit, business units that are either sort of uh, self-organizing, meaning they really have no relationship prior, so they're not going to invest a lot of time up front in order to uh, map a process, or smaller organizations, so the, the sort of SMB type ap application. Um, I've got, we've got things like the dashboard that you would expect to have in this kind of an application. Um, and I can also uh, look at a view of it historically, and we and we'll provide a nice uh, a nice view in this case where I can quickly quickly see the data that was added, when it was added, who it was added by, in a, in a pretty easy to use format. And so we think that that format's enough, whereby I don't have to do more add more complexity at uh, at design time to decide what this is going to look like, and just allow it to sort of uh, move along and assemble itself uh, during the during the path. So with that, I want to I'm going to switch back to the uh, the laptop. Okay, that was good. Uh, so this is generally what the process maker interface looks like. In fact, it's again it is process maker under the hood. We've taken out the designer, so you won't see a tab for designer. Normally, we have a, a, design, a tab called designer. And there's really just users, uh, tasks. Oh, I logged out. So there's just uh, users, tasks, and forms. Uh, so for example, if I go over to uh, the forms, uh, and, there, and there's one, uh, well, first let's go to the tasks, and let me show you the, the main difference between that first example and the second example. So if I look at that loan application, um, and I go into that, and I look at the task itself, uh, there's a key question here, which is the question of uh, use mobile ad hoc workflow, yes or no. So again, we, we, we know a lot of our initial revenue opportunities are simply for mobile data capture. It's still quite a novelty for, uh, for lots of different types of clients. Uh, so, so there, we don't want to add this kind of complexity. And that uninteresting version actually becomes very useful for the client. But here, we've got a simple toggle switch that says, add workflow, uh, which means that I'm going to be able to continue routing this around. I can use a, a, a web interface as well, but we actually believe it becomes really interesting for groups that might want to adopt it completely on a mobile basis. So the idea that this would stay mobile the, the entire time. Uh, and then essentially, if I come in and uh, create a new form, and go into my, my new form, uh, here I can begin adding the kinds of fields we saw, so I'll just add one. And I could add a uh, photo field. And essentially then save this, this form and go over to my tasks and inside maybe this uh, loan application, if that's the one I want to edit. 
Now I just find the, the, the new form that I've, that I've added and add that in. Uh, make that the, um, the starting form. And now it's deployed to my, uh, to my system. So if I go into the, uh, into the loan application now, so if I could just switch back to the, the tablet for a minute. So I'll log in as Brian just to finish up. Log back in and now I see my test form, and I've logged in. So there it is. Again, built that application. No designer, a few moments. It's associated with users. The users are associated with tasks. And the, the idea being lowering the barrier to entry, getting uh, these kinds of self-organized groups to be able to deploy a process in, in minutes. Uh, so that's it.